Hello, and welcome to the first episode, and possibly the last, depending on how you all react to it, of Show Us Your Tips, the show where you send us in your woodworking tips, and we talk about, explain, and test them. So all that said, why don't we just jump right in? Sean? Thanks, Chris. All right, our first tip comes from Philip Taylor, and you can check him out on Instagram here. Philip is calling this tip half lap perfection, and it has to do with setting our saw blade height to exactly half the thickness of a workpiece for doing things like half laps and cross laps and all the other laps. The nice thing about this tip is that it can be easily translated between different cutting tools like saw blades and router bits. All right, let's get into it. There are a lot of situations in woodworking and furniture making where a half lap or cross lap joint makes a lot of sense. And one of the trickiest parts about doing these joints is finding the exact halfway point up the thickness of a piece so that when both sides of the joint are cut, they come together perfectly and add up to the same thickness. The most obvious approach would be to measure the thickness of your parts that you're wanting to join together, then divide that in two, and that'll be the height that you need to set your saw blade at. Seems easy enough, but this approach can actually end up being pretty time consuming and it introduces multiple opportunities for error. Sometimes even doing the math alone can cause problems. So I ran through this entire process to see how it would end up for me. And as you can see here, I was off just enough that when the two pieces were put together, there was a slight discrepancy. And to smooth out this joint, a fair amount of sanding or planing would be needed to get them just right. So a far better approach, which is faster and more accurate, is to essentially let the saw dial itself in. By setting the saw slightly below half the thickness of the piece, I'm able to take a cut from both sides and visibly see how far I am from being perfectly set at halfway. From there, I can slowly raise the saw blade and keep taking passes from both sides until I have just barely removed that last little bit of material. With the saw blade height now dialed in, all I have to do is recut the dados on both pieces and check the fit of the cross slab joint. And as you can see here, the finished result is far better than my first attempt and about as close to perfect as I can hope for. Almost no sanding required for this one. All right, thanks for the great tip, Philip. Chris, you have one for us? I do. And this one comes from Jeff Carrion from Parkridge, Illinois, who submitted a really good tip about how to get cleaner cuts on a table saw, particularly when cutting long tapers. So whenever you're making rip cuts on a table saw, if you're cutting a particularly thick or dense piece of wood, or maybe your saw is just a little underpowered, basically anything that makes for a slower feed rate, it's not uncommon to get some burn marks on your pieces. Because of that, something that I've done for a long time, and this isn't the tip, is I'll make my first cut, leaving the piece about a 16th of an inch too wide, and then remove the last little bit in a second rip, which results in a cleaner finished cut. So the purpose of this tip is to let you essentially do that same thing, only when you're cutting a taper. And as luck would have it, I cut a lot of tapers. The legs on this desk and this coffee table are a couple examples of where this would be useful. So to cut those tapers, I normally like to use a sled. That said, this exact same principle would work on a tapering jig, but anyway, here's how it works. In this shot, you can see that I've got a quick little sled set up to cut my angle. You can also see the taper that I wanna cut drawn on my workpiece. So when I set up the cut, I'm gonna have these two little shims, just a little less than an eighth of an inch thick, sandwiched between my workpiece and the fence that I'm screwing down to the sled, which is gonna determine the angle. So with that all set up, I'm gonna remove the shims and lock down my workpiece and make the cut. After making the cut, as you can see here, the workpiece has some pretty good, or I guess bad, burn marks. But thanks to the shims that we inserted when setting up our jig, the piece is still too wide by the thickness of those shims. So now we'll put the shims back in, lock our piece down, and make a light cut, which is not only going to finish off the pieces dimensionally, but also get rid of the edge with the burn marks. <laughs> 
Now, as I said before, this exact same technique will work with a tapering jig as well. The important things to remember are, do your initial setup with the shims in place, remove the shims to make your first cut, put the shims back in to make your cleanup cut. And if you don't have shims sitting around, a really good alternative is a popsicle stick. All right, over to you, Sean. Okay, this next tip comes from Mike Poe. He didn't give us a social media account to plug, so if you see him on the street, give him a high five. Thanks, Mike. This tip has to do with dialing in cuts and more specifically, dados and grooves. Oftentimes, when cutting a dado or groove that another piece has to fit into, it's very likely we have to do a bit of finessing and sneaking up to get it to fit just right. Now for the most part, I tend to cut a dado first, then dial in the size of a tenon or tongue to fit said dado. That being said, there can very possibly be a time where the dado needs to be the side of the joint that's dialed in. So Mike hooked us up with a sweet trick to get it just right. To illustrate, I milled a board to as close to half inch thick as I could without going under, and with that, I obviously would be cutting a dado with a half inch diameter router bit, hoping for that perfect fit right off the bat. So after setting up my straight edge and a couple passes to cut the dado, you can see here the small board just doesn't quite fit. It was close, but just not quite right. So in a situation where making the small board thinner isn't an option, the obvious path would be to slightly shift the straight edge and take another pass to just widen the dado by a hair. But the problem with that is as soon as you unclamp the straight edge, you're introducing a ton of potential error. You could get out of square or move it too far and end up with a very ill-fitting joint. The other option is to simply apply a piece of painter's tape to the straight edge or to your router base. The thickness of the tape will shift the cut over by a tiny amount and with one more pass, sure enough, the two pieces fit together perfectly. Obviously, this is a very specific situation, but I do think that using tape as a micro adjustment is a technique that can be translated to other applications. Basically, any time that a stop or fence is being used, you might have to shift something to make a fine adjustment and a piece of tape might just be that little adjustment that's needed. All right, Chris, you have another tip for us? Actually, before we send it back to Chris, let's thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Both Chris and I have been using Squarespace to build and maintain our websites for years now, and honestly, it's one of the best decisions we made when starting our businesses. At the time, I had no idea what I needed to do to build a website, but Squarespace makes it super easy to get up and running with plenty of professional looking templates to choose from, as well as making things like purchasing domains really simple. Squarespace also has plenty of e-commerce tools to help you grow your business, things like inventory management, a simple and secure checkout process, and unlimited products allow us to easily manage online transactions and not get bogged down with mundane tasks so that we can devote more time to doing the things we enjoy, like talking about woodworking tips. So if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you already have one, go check out Squarespace to see if it might be a better option for you. Head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right. Thanks Squarespace. Chris, you have another tip for us? I do. And this one comes to us from Chris and Sean from Whittier, California. Chris and Sean, that's... What are the chances of that? Well, let's just see what they say. Hey Chris, hey Sean. First off, huge fans of the channel. Yeah, and we're excited about this new tip series and we think we have a good one for you. Right, so this one is one that we actually use a lot, but it's usually buried somewhere deep within a project video. So we thought we'd just submit it, so here it is. All right, for this trick, we're gonna cut perfectly sized dados or grooves on our table saw by utilizing a drill bit. So in this shot, I'm on the table saw using a cross cut sled and I wanna cut a dado to the exact perfect width to fit another piece of plywood. The first step would be determining where you want your dado to start and then creating some sort of stop block to prevent the workpiece from being able to move any farther. And in this instance, for me, that's this piece of scrap wood clamped to the cross cut sled's fence. 
Then to establish the first edge of my dado, I'm gonna take whatever material it is that I want to ultimately go in that dado. So here again, it's a piece of plywood and sandwich it between my workpiece and the stop block to make my first cut. With that done, I can remove the spacer piece and reference my workpiece up against the stop block. And you can see here that if I were to do that, I would end up with a dado that was exactly one blade curve wider than what I need it to be. So that means I need something that'll nudge my workpiece over by the exact thickness of the curve of my blade. And as it turns out, most blades have an eighth inch curve. So we can use an eighth inch drill bit. By the way, if you have a thin curve blade, this exact same principle would work, only you'd use a smaller drill bit, most likely a sixteenth of an inch. Anyhow, so next what I'll do is use that drill bit as a spacer and establish the other side of my dado. From there, you can just make a few passes to clear out the material between your first two cuts and you'll be good to go. And one of the great things about this technique is that there's no measuring. And because you're using the actual work pieces as spacers, you end up with a perfect fit. In this sped up clip, you can see me cutting another dado for a piece of hardwood that's thicker. But I don't even have any clue as to how thick it is. I never measured it. And it doesn't matter. My dado is going to perfectly match the thickness of the spacer. The one extra tip that I'll give is, and I was too lazy to take my own advice here, but if possible, use a blade that has a flat tooth so that you end up with a flat bottom on your dado. That said, once you understand this technique, it can be extrapolated out to other situations. One that comes to my mind was for the Pico console, where I had to cut dados into the legs at an angle, and using basically this exact same approach, I was able to do that no problem. All right, well, we hope you enjoyed this one, and if you have a woodworking tip that you wanna submit, just follow the instructions that you see here on screen, and thanks again to everybody who submitted, and we'll see you in the next one.